Welcome back. One of the benefits of being a pensioner, but still reasonably active in this great profession of ours, is that I can take an overview of the major trends I've observed over my career in and around veterinary practice. I can observe and comment on the challenges facing practice owners and managers, and I can enjoy thinking about some of the possible disruptive changes facing the future for practice owners without the burden of having to make the deci difficult decisions that they may have to make. The 1960s and 70s were an exciting time to be a small animal vet. Practice in the UK followed the trends in North America with the development of some wonderful veterinary hospitals offering a comprehensive range of consulting, diagnostic, medical, surgical and inpatient facilities. A significant proportion of practice income at that time resulted from fractures and other road traffic accident injuries. The clinical meetings included plenty of practical sessions devoted to anaesthesia and surgery, particularly orthopaedics, and young vets came back from the latest CPD meeting keen to put what they learnt into practice. Referral practices were few and far between, and I can recall on many occasions phoning the Royal Veterinary College in London, uh, seeking an appointment, seeking some advice and being offered a possible appointment for a client maybe in a few weeks time when the appropriate specialist might be available. The result was that first opinion practices dealt with most cases in-house. Professional fees were modest, pet insurance was just a glimmer in the eye of Patsy Bloom and plenty of young vets who were mostly male were anxiously looking to invest in a partnership in the right practice. It all sounds idyllic, but believe me, things were far from perfect and change was inevitable. Since then, professional standards have improved beyond all recognition. Referral services are available for almost every clinical condition you can think of. And the acquisition of independent practices by corporate investors has generated plenty of opportunities for vets and nurses looking for a nine to five uh, or part-time career in the corporate world. On the other hand, the future for the owners of veterinary practices who want to remain independent doesn't look so rosy. It's certainly true that more effective business management can improve the, the uh, profitability of almost any practice by better resource management. But the biggest challenge seems to be the ability of practice owners to recruit vets with the competence and the confidence they need to achieve their business objectives. Last week, an article by Adrian Nelson Pratt, published in the Veterinary Record, reported the experience of a practice director receiving applicants looking for a job in practice, but one in which they specified exactly what they are or what they're not prepared to do. I too have heard stories about potential applicants specifying no surgery or anything in the op room where they don't need to talk to clients, or no weekends, afternoons only, or no out of hours. Makes me wonder sometimes what they're taught about a career in general practice during their five years at vet school. Adrian suggests that one way to address the shortage of clinicians is to pra in practice is to construct some sort of c composite team that sounds a bit of a management nightmare to me, and in desperation I might be tempted to stop employing vets altogether and convert the practice into a facility in which self-employed vets could simply rent consulting, diagnostic, surgical or inpatient facilities from me at an appropriate hourly or daily charge. Good idea? Probably not. But Adrian's conclusion that the industry needs some creative solutions and some pioneer practices to try them out is very much spot on. What do you think? See you next time.